Hello everyone, welcome back. So today I'm going to talk about liquidity. Now I think this protocol has a good chance to reshape uh, the entire borrowing market in DeFi. Now if you are in the DeFi space, I think this video is going to provide you with a lot of value. Some of the APRs that you can receive through liquidity are extremely high. Uh, some of the highest I've seen for a legitimate project. I'm really excited to share with you the details of how the protocol works, uh, but it is a bit complex. If you have any questions, I will link the DeFi innovation chat below. Um, I'll always be there if you have any questions and then there are other community members that are going to be happy to help you as well. But liquidity is essentially a new borrowing platform for DeFi. Liquidity allows you to deposit ETH as collateral, and then you can withdraw their stablecoin um, and use that in the DeFi ecosystem any way you'd like. One of the best parts about Liquidity is that you can see here that you can borrow LUSD at 0% interest. Now, in addition to having 0% interest payments, they also have a lower collateralization ratio of 110%. That means that if you deposit $110 worth of ETH, you can withdraw $100 of their stablecoin. I'm going to walk through how that works, uh, but of course, as the collateral ratio gets lower, uh, your risk goes up but you can choose any collateral ratio above 110%. So you could collateralize up to 1000%, 2000%, etc. So on this page here, you can see they go through the core features. Um, I've already touched on a few, but I wanna walk you through this page just so you understand the basics of the mechanics behind this protocol. So first up is interest-free borrowing, something we covered. The second fascinating feature or actually lack of feature is there's no actually first party front end. So this entire protocol is publicly out there and anyone can build a front end for liquidity. So this just means the protocol is more censorship resistant. Uh, there's really no way to take down this protocol. It lives on the Ethereum blockchain. It will stay there forever and anyone can build a front end for it. Next, you can see the 110% collateral ratio is listed here. That means it's more capitally efficient than other protocols like Compound or Yearn. Basically, you can take out more debt with less collateral. Now, next up is efficient liquidations. Uh, this topic's a bit more complex, and I think it'll actually be more helpful if I show you this alongside the actual UI. So I'm gonna leave this for a bit later on. Now, the next point they want to highlight here is the redeemable stablecoin aspect. So with this protocol, you're going to be receiving LUSD when you put up ETH as collateral. Now, obviously that's a new stablecoin that they've kind of invented. Um, I'm gonna walk you through the mechanics in just a moment, but basically that LUSD stablecoin can pretty much always be redeemed for $1 worth of ETH, and that's how it retains its value. What's also really fascinating about this project is that it's actually governance free. So yes, there is a liquidity token, but it accrues revenue and value not from governance. This is really fascinating. If you're in that DeFi innovation chat, you've probably heard me rant how a governance token is really just a feature requesting token, uh, unless controlling the majority of those governance tokens allows you to fire the core dev team and then build your own protocol. So what's really interesting about the liquidity token is it allows you to accrue fees from the protocol itself, and it doesn't provide any governance rights. What that means is that when this protocol shipped a couple weeks ago, it was fully complete um, and no new changes will be made to the system. Very bold by their team, but I know they've been working on it for a while and testing it, and it seems to have been functioning very well over the past two weeks. Now, next up is incentives for stability providers. Now, anyone can come in and provide stability to the ecosystem by depositing their LUSD. That's what they receive from providing ETH as collateral, and they can deposit that LUSD into the stability pool. That stability pool will automatically look for loans that are liquidatable, and it will liquidate those loans um, so long as their collateral ratio is below the minimum, and then those rewards are automatically distributed to all LUSD stakers. So this is a very, very efficient system. It means that the system's automatically and autonomously monitoring um, any loans that are below their CR and liquidating them. So because this is done autonomously and continuously, that's why the CR can be set so low at 110%. This protocol reacts very quickly to changes in the market and fluctuations in the price of ETH. And this last section, incentives for stakers, basically if you have the liquidity token, you stake it, uh, you receive a portion of borrow and redemption fees. When you stake the liquidity token, there's no lockup, you can unstake it anytime, uh, but this is a great way to return value back to those liquidity token holders. Now I mentioned liquidity itself does not have a front end, but they do have a front end section on their website. And if you can see here, uh, they list several different operators that you can pick uh, to go through when you're looking to stake or take out a loan. Now, one thing that's very important here is the kickback rate. Now, the kickback rate is the percentage that this front end operator is going to take of your liquidity rewards. Obviously, your goal is to find someone with the lowest kickback rate, which is a bit counterintuitive, but here uh, that would be LiquidFi. You can see the kickback rate is 100%, which means you're keeping 100% of your rewards. 
in their docs, they basically say that a platform can choose any kickback rate they want. Obviously, there's inherent market competition that someone now has an 100% kickback rate or free service. Uh, but they basically go on to say that um, you're probably able to charge a little bit more of a kickback rate if you offer better features to users. For now, all the front ends seem pretty similar. So I'm going to walk you through the free one to use, which is Liquidify. So as you can see, we're on that liquidity.fi uh, UI. And you can see here we're on the main page called Trove. Here you can deposit ETH and then you can select how much LUSD you want to borrow uh, from this tranche of debt up to an 110% collateralization ratio. So I just put in some sample values here. If you deposit 1,000 ETH, uh, you could ask to borrow 2,000 LUSD and you can see that collateral ratio puts you at 120 or so percent. They do indicate uh, that it's somewhat risky here by coloring that orange. Um, so that means you're close to getting liquidated should the price of ETH fall. It's also worth noting that they do require a liquidation reserve of 200 LUSD. Now you will get this when you repay your debt um, and close out the position, but this LUSD is basically saved to reward liquidators uh, so they don't have to cover the cost of gas of liquidating your position should they have to do that. Now another very important thing you can see at the top here, uh, you can see the total LUSD supply is 1.2 billion, and you can see the total collateral ratio or basically the health of this ecosystem. Now, one really, really important thing to note here is if this collateral ratio drops below 150%, uh, that 110% minimum CR becomes an 150% minimum, minimum CR. What that means is you want to be really careful when you're depositing and deciding how much to borrow. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend going below that unless you really know what you're doing or have a bot designed to protect your position. Now, next up is the stability pool. So in this pool, anyone can stake the LUSD that they received for posting that ETH as collateral. They can stake that here uh, to be part of the set of liquidators. Basically, this means that anyone that wants can stake their LUSD and executors are constantly monitoring um, every trove of debt to make sure it doesn't drop below the required collateral ratio, whether that's 110% or 150%. Now, as I mentioned, when any trove's collateral ratio drops below the required level, whether that's 110% or 150%, the LUSD in this stability pool is going to be used uh, to liquidate that collateral and convert the LUSD back to ETH. So this stability pool is really at the core of uh, keeping the ecosystem healthy. So next up is one of the most exciting tabs if you're a yield farmer or interested in staking your liquidity token. So first up is single staking for the liquidity token. Now this is receiving a monster APR of 949%. Now the amazing thing about this is you're getting paid out in both ETH and LUSD, which is the native stablecoin. This APR is calculated off of a seven day historical average of fees that the protocol has accrued for generating new loans and closing them out. I found an incredible dashboard on Dune Analytics that I will share below that uh, basically has the total collateral ratio for the protocol, the staking seven day APR, um, and then some really other interesting figures like protocol revenue. So basically all of that protocol revenue is automatically going back to liquidity stakers. And that's what generates such a high APR. Now next up is the ETH LUSD liquidity pool on Uniswap. Now this pool is only running for six weeks. Now what's really interesting about the yield here, as you can see, is that this is the yield that you'll receive if you hold the farm until its completion, which I think as of this date is about four weeks from now. So that means you're earning about 10% yield in a month at the current rates. So lastly, we have the liquidation tab. Now, as I mentioned before, anyone can liquidate um, loans that are below the required collateral ratio. So you can see here, they basically have a ledger of all loans and they list the collateral ratio from lowest to highest. Uh, there's a ton of pages of that now, 893. Uh, but basically in the order of lowest collateral ratio to highest, those loans can be liquidated so long as they're below the threshold. Um, right now, if I try to liquidate the loans, I'll just receive an error because none of them are below the required 110%. So I think that gives you a great overview of the UI, but I do briefly want to touch on the tokenomics of this project because if you're staking or farming, this is going to be something you're very interested in. Now I will link this Medium post below. Uh, this is basically the protocol's launch announcement. Uh, you can see here the token allocations. So yes, uh, you're probably first going to notice the tokens are disproportionately allocated to investors and the team. Uh, but the reason why this isn't so bad as it refers to this project is because once again, there are no governance rights with this token. Uh, basically, there's no extra power anyone has over the protocol by holding a majority of governance tokens. There's really nothing to vote on here. What's really important here is that the team and advisors and the investors all have a one year lockup on their tokens. That means the supply of the liquidity token is not going to drastically increase. So obviously, this is great if you're thinking of holding and staking the liquidity token itself. 
What's really interesting about the community liquidity allocation is that the distributions here, as far as liquidity rewards, have every year. So this means that reward distribution is going to be deflationary in nature. This is all very exciting and the economics behind this token are very unique. Uh, so I'd recommend you read through this whole Medium post, uh, which again is linked below. And lastly, I just want to touch on the current price of the liquidity token. So you can see it's uh, trading at a market cap of about 48 million with a fully diluted valuation of just under 3 billion. So again, up to you here to do a valuation on the token, but I'd recommend looking at some comparables in this space. Obviously, the first one you'd want to compare to is look at Maker. Uh, you can see the market cap there is about 3.6 billion and the fully diluted valuation is 4 billion. So Maker is more valuable, but of course it's more established and has more traction at this time. Another useful project to look at would be Compound uh, with a current market cap of 2.5 billion and just under a $5 billion fully diluted valuation. So that's pretty much all I have for you. Um, I think this project is extremely innovative and going to be very disruptive going forward in DeFi. It seems much better designed than Maker. Um, it's more capitally efficient and there is better incentives for people that use the protocol. So I'd really recommend that you check this out. Uh, do your own research to see if this is something you want to invest in. And of course, you can check out our Telegram community, which is linked below if you want to discuss this with us. So thank you all so much for watching this video and I can't wait to see you in the next one.